In this airshow, loitering munitions and loitering weapon systems are especially interesting. Various such products are displayed here. A loitering munition also known as a suicide drone or kamikaze drone is a weapon system category in which the munition loiters around the target area for some time, searches for targets, and attacks once a target is located. Loitering munitions enable faster reaction times against concealed or hidden targets that emerge for short periods without placing high-value platforms close to the target area, and also allow more selective targeting as the actual attack mission can be aborted. Loitering munitions fit in the niche between cruise missiles and unmanned combat aerial vehicles sharing characteristics with both. They differ from cruise missiles in that they are designed to loiter for a relatively long time around the target area, and from UCAVs in that a loitering munition is intended to be expended in an attack and has a built-in warhead. I recognized it as J-16D fighter at a glance. It's so cool, there are a lot of reports about this fighter. Look at the devices on its wingtips and the pods. These are its main electronic warfare weapons. We know that there are soft kill weapons and hard kill weapons on J-16D. The device on the wingtip and the pod under the wing that you just talked about are its soft kill weapons. Where are those missiles? You see that there are two missiles under the belly between the two engines. These are its hard weapons. Electronic warfare weapons as soft kill weapons will suppress the effectiveness of the enemy's radar and other electronic equipment. This may force the enemy to turn off the radar. If the enemy turns on the radar, then they will be directly attacked by these missiles. The best damage effect can be achieved by using both soft and hard weapons at the same time, on which the J-16D can achieve. Does it carry only one type of missile? You see there are two different missiles near each other. These two military fans are going inside the exhibition halls to look for these two missiles. Look, this is the LD-10 light short-range anti-radiation missile. We saw two missiles hanged under J-16D belly lifts in the outfield, and the first one is the LD-10 missile. I couldn't see the second one clearly, but I speculate that it should be this TL-30. It turns out that these are two anti-radiation missiles, also known as anti-radar missiles. It refers to a missile that uses the electromagnetic radiation of the enemy's radar and antenna for guidance to destroy the enemy's radar and its carrier or communication hub. In electronic countermeasures, it is the most effective weapon against radar. However, as a careful military fan, she found that these two types of ammunition were somewhat different. The difference between them is that the TL-30 has two particularly large wings. The one above is called a light anti-radiation missile. I call it a loitering anti-radiation missile. It can loiter for a long time on the battlefield. This TL-30 below is an export version. Its range is limited to 280 kilometers. The most important thing is that its loitering time is about 50 minutes. Because of long-range loitering, it needs bigger wings. It turns out, unlike the direct attack type LD-10 anti-radiation missile, the TL-30 loitering anti-radiation missile can directly attack the target or can loiter over the target area for a long time according to the needs of the battlefield. Like a drone, it undertakes a series of tasks such as reconnaissance and monitoring, target guidance, situational awareness, target damage reporting, and effect judgment. At the end of the loitering time, attack the enemy, or attack the exposed enemy's radar any time while turning on. At the recent Dubai Air Show, an anti-radiation loitering missile exhibited by the Aviation Industry Corporation of China and along with the L-15 advanced trainer aircraft attracted widespread attention around the world. This is the airborne version of the TL-30, or so-called TL-30A. The missile can be carried by fighter jets, trainers, and even drones. Can also be fitted to warships and ground combat vehicles. Therefore, some people call it the all-platform, radar killer. TL-30 is a loitering anti-radiation missile with many advantages over conventional anti-radiation missiles. The most prominent point is the ability to fly for long periods of time in a combat zone to hunt enemy radars. At the same time, as an aircraft, it can also trick the enemy radar into turning on, thereby increasing the probability of killing enemy radars. The loitering missile can hover over the war theater for a long time. Once the enemy's air defense system radar is turned on, 
loitering anti-radiation missile then attacks the radar in order to achieve the purpose of seizing air and sea dominance. From this point of view, this is a grim reaper wandering over the head of an enemy. The TL-30 anti-radiation loitering missile has a weight of 270 kilograms with a powerful warhead and a length of 3.7 meters. It adopts strap-down inertial navigation plus satellite navigation to form a complex guidance method with the broadband anti-radiation seeker, which can make full use of reconnaissance information to quickly suppress the enemy's air defense. In addition to the airborne version of TL-30A, there is also a vehicle-mounted version of the TL-30B, and a ship-based version of the TL-30C. The missile uses a small turbojet engine. The flight speed can reach Mach 0.65. The maximum range is 280 kilometers. The range of domestic versions could be longer. The longest loitering time is about 50 minutes. It can carry out deadly strikes on the enemy's ground and shipboard's various radars, such as guided radar, detection and tracking radar, illumination radar, and artillery radar, etc. The missile is also capable of pre-mission planning for salvos, coordinated attacks and cluster attacks. So what are the characteristics of this missile in comparison with the common anti-radiation missiles? The common anti-radiation missiles generally have a relatively high speed and a lower cruise time. When a common anti-radiation missile is launched, although it can stay in the sky for a period of time, for example when the enemy's radar is turned off, make a big turn or do a snake-shaped maneuver to wait until the enemy's radar is turned on again, or according to its own memory to attack the target. But the whole process is relatively short. However, the flight speed of anti-radiation loitering missiles is slower, and its wings are much larger. So it stays in the air longer, for this missile the max time is about 50 minutes as mentioned early. If the enemy radar detected the missile, as they could turn off the radar for a long time, under such circumstances, these 50 minutes are enough for our advanced fighter jets to complete the tasks of penetration and ground strikes. Anti-radiation loitering missiles and active anti-radiation high-speed missiles complement each other and cooperate with each other to implement long period of time electromagnetic suppression on enemy ground targets, especially radar communication targets. And compared with the general anti-radiation missile, its cost may be lower and the strike range is longer. It also has a longer period of time and a more flexible for platform selection to launch. TL-30 has created a new direction in the field of anti-radiation weapons. This new type of weapon system may play an irreplaceable role in the future regional wars and informationalized battlefields.